G'day and welcome to part four on the wagon. This video, okay, so the first 10 minutes or so is me banging on, which is unusual, isn't it? But sort of, I had to go up to the other place and look at the XT, see where things like the wiper wiring sits and, you know, verify where the, um, what do you call it, washer bottle is and all this sort of stuff. I wanted to compare the ZK here to the XT up there. <clears throat> and I also wanted to look at the sedan, the XA sedan. So John bought a crash pad. How's this? It's beautiful. It was a limited run, really high quality, a lot higher quality than the one I put in the XW. And he gave it to me for the wagon. 500 bucks or something it cost him, a lot of money. So he's going to get another one, or at least he's ordered another one. And the dash pad's black, and I'm wondering whether to leave the, dash, the whole dash black in that car. And okay. I'm kind of just winging it at the moment with that, just seeing how we go. I picked up, right, I picked up some good cheap parts. And it's unusual seeing that because even though classic cars have come down, the vendors are still of the opinion that the parts for them are worth a million dollars. And there's one clown, I'm not going to say who he is, I really want to though, because he's a, he's a snake in the grass, this guy, he just charges too much. And... The bloke I found is Big Bad Bundy Bear or Big Bundy Bear or something in Queensland. And I showed at the end of the video, Whoa, picked up some real bargains. So happy with that. Also picked up a water pump on special, 60 bucks, I think, for a cleaver. And a gasket set, full gasket kit, which was like $110 or something. They discounted the snot out of it. It could be a 4V1, so it might need different inlet manifold gaskets. It doesn't matter though, it's the whole thing, you know what I mean? So that's for engines coming up and that sort of thing. So um, what else was I doing? Just pulling the rest of the wagon apart. In the next fortnight, I'm going up there again in, in about two weeks. And that will be um, with a pressure cleaner to really hose it out. I'm going to put, I found a huge rat's nest in there. I'm going to take the headlining out too. I'm going to drop that and just wash the car out. Wash the engine bay out. You know, all the stuff that I normally do. Um, <clears throat> anyway, look, to get back on track, not much else to say here. Um, as far as news with the Fairlane, I'm just waiting on... Not waiting on anything. Oh, I've got to get springs and a couple of other bits for it. Try and fix that fan switch as well. But anyway, look... The Fairlane's not in this video, it's all about the wagon and a few other bits and pieces at the other place. So I hope you enjoy. A little bit of a dreary day. Um, I do the lawns in the rain, which you're not supposed to do. Because it um, clogs the mower up. Had to keep hosing it off. Lovely V8 running here on the lawn. Should give it a wash, there's a big bird thing. I've got to take this in for service. I don't service this car, I service all the rest. Um, I'm getting, hang on a second, I can turn that off, see it's a service, um, it's only done, 50, I think it's done 59, exactly, is it going to go off, yeah, 59,000, that's not much for an 8 cylinder, but just as I can't get underneath the thing, and to be really frank, can't be bothered servicing it, but every year it goes into Paddo's, but now Paddo's isn't there anymore. I've been, I really have had another look at this wagon, but the sedan, and I still haven't got around to putting lights in here yet, I've still got a heater, which obviously I don't use. Now I've got the other rear quarter, I'm going to take that off, the other one's in better shape. Um, not sure where I'm going to join it because it's, it's cut about there I think. Um, it's better through here, but it's not really better there. In fact, it's probably worse there. So I'm going to be making one quarter out of two. And this is a little bit better just there. Um, the other one's got a bit of a belting in it. So I can order these parts here. I'm not too worried about that. The front is what worries me a little bit. I've got some XC bits. For here as we showed in another video i'm going to pull the xc bits off in layers so i can see exactly what's there 
Therefore, I'll know exactly what's in here. We'll pop the door off and we'll repair this. And it'll come up beautifully. I'm not really worried about it. Um, and the sills on this are pretty good from memory. There's a little pinhole there. But are they worth taking off? Yeah, kind of. Um, there's a big dent there. I could pull that out, I suppose, but I'd almost sooner get get them to roll the what do you call it? Oh, it's called yeah. Get them to roll and joggle a new bit for work from work for a couple of meters long, and use that in the wagon. Or sorry, use it here. No, use that for the wagon. This one. I'll buy a new section of sill, use the front bit for the wagon, and the rear bit, I'll replace that whole bit there. Or use a work one, one of the two. I haven't worked out what I'm going to do with that yet. Um, John, my brother, is involved with this car. It's half his now. John likes cheese. Hope he does, because there's a lot of it in here. But he's bought a new dash, but he's been buying bits and pieces for it. So um, I'm going to start cutting into this and Grant has donated a welder for working up here, which I think is typical of Grant, extremely generous. Um, I've got to get that dash pad, the lighting in here is awful and just see that it fits. I'll pop that other guard off. Speaking of the other guard, it's actually better. So I've got good, much better guards for this car than I have for the station wagon. But this one, it's had a bit of a had a bit of a punch in the face um but on the whole you know you can get these sections for the bottom those two lower sections and then that guards a peach that'll go on the wagon is that rain yeah the rain kind of sucks oh it'll wash that bird pool um i love it up here i sort of crave to come up here when i come up here i'm really super relaxed um, so look, we'll have a look at some doors. We're going to take some doors off. First thing I'll do is do an oil change on that bloody thing. Right, it's okay. Um, just because the um, sedan was upside down for so long, it's much better in the sill areas than this car. Oops, sorry. There we go. Can't do it with one hand. I want to take these off and have a bit of a look. And I needed the right side sockets. I didn't bring them last time. Oh, it bad. This is a case of the donor car being a lot better than the one you're building. I got some broken glass and some mangy window sealer. This is so good though because I can just cut that off. Right underneath the guard, you'll never ever see it. And make these bits. And these bits are so much better than the other. There's two layers there. And you're only going to cut out what we need to cut out. Because otherwise, you're setting yourself up for more work. This side's worse. But again, I just don't care. It's fine. There's the lip there where they're joined, where the upper plenum's joined. And I can really fix that well. It's just, that isn't even hard. In fact, I won't even need to brace the car to do that. But with the sedan, I will. I need to find that little screw that dropped because that's going to wind up in perfect camouflage under here and then stick into a tire so i need to find that ow oh damn is that it um shoot where the hell did that go oh gosh i got barclays for finding that a couple of things i wanted to look at one was on the old xd XT uses its overflow bottle on the side of the radiator shroud. Fairlades is in here. So, this is secured a bit differently, I think. That's your horn. There are your guard braces. All those cable ties and everything, that, no, no, I didn't do any of this. So the wiring comes up the same way at the front of the engine. Um, fuel line goes through there. It's missing its grommet, but... All good. And that's where it secures at the bottom, but it's not secure on that side. The overflow bottle on the fair lane is in here. But it, 
I think that bottle might be different. Um, it just the family one looks like it's further forward, but I'm not sure. The engine baby's totally the same. The other thing I needed to see. That's what I wanted to see. There's your wiper wiring. I probably filled this hole in. There's supposed to be a hole nice there, which secures that connector. Um, I can't get my lighting on it. Damn, come on. What are you doing? Yeah. Um, so that's the hole there. I'll look for another one of those. I might have one. No, I don't think I have. But anyway, that's where the hole's meant to be. I would think I probably welded that up. Um, otherwise, that's all good. The sticker location, it has the battery disconnect one there. That's the only sticker on the fireball in this car. And the 25 kilovolt thing is there for the electronic ignition. This is missing stickers, isn't it? Hang on, wasn't there another one up there? Oh, the emissions one. The emissions one was there. So I repainted, that's right, I forgot. I repainted the top of this engine bay down there in 2006 or something. And that's where that other stick has gone to, the emissions one. So this one need, this needs one too. Um, the lines are all the same, how they fit down there. But you can see here, and they did the same with the XW, it says no paint on the back of the shocker tower. That's all factory. I'd be inclined to leave that. Um, very shoddy. <laughs> Which is just how we like it. Nice and shoddy. Right, well I've got some answers there, that's cool. Look how they did the engine bays, or the, the bonnet. So the gun came from this angle. I missed all that. <laughs> It was a bit of a pain because I've left the tool I normally use. It's not a filter remover, it's just a big pair of multi, it's just to loosen it, I can't get it off. So I have to bring it up from home, so there's going to be another two weeks of that oil and filter change. Um, but I did have to tighten that alternator belt. That was starting to slip a bit. And that drives the water pump, which in turn drives the power steering. It was a bit, when it was de dead cold as soon as you started, it didn't want to turn too well. And that belt was loose. So. Everything else looks alright in tip top. And I think one of the first things I'm going to have to do is work out the lighting in here because, whoopsie, it is intolerable. So I need to put, I think, an LED fluoro, so to speak, a strip LED. I might put them on the outskirts, like one across there, one here, over the doorway, here, there, and there. Um, and I think that'll light the shop up quite well because at the moment without this lead light on you can't see what you're doing. It's impossible. The lighting's terrible but, you know, a bit of light in here reflecting off those sort of zinc alone walls would look pretty good I reckon. This whole thing makes me nervous because I said to my brother, Do, would you like it? Because DJ dug it out of the outback, Graham fitted a roof to it, Aunt Kevin Got some doors which look pretty good. I don't know what that thing is, it looks kind of dead, but it might be just mastic, I'm not sure. Um, so I've got to repair some of the doors. That one there is not good. Look, there. But this car on the whole is very good. It just has one or two little gremlins. Two holes over there under the glove box, uh, deal with fitted air conditioning, we'll weld those up. And the floor's pretty good. It does need. Um, yeah, it's a tiny bit of rust over there, like across there. So I'll cut that out and put new stuff in, new, new metal in. Plenum looks absolutely excellent, but there is, I oh don't know, it's not excellent. Well, that's easy to fix there. There's a bit over there, but again, I don't think it's a problem to fix that. Um, that's actually easy. Easy, easy. It's the bottom of the plenum I'm worried about, and that's fine. So <coughs> you can get those kick panel trims. And even those over there, I'm not too fussed about that because, I mean, I would sooner patch that than replace that whole piece because the whole piece looks pretty good, sort of. I'll have a closer look. <laughs> I'm kind of doubtful. But this car, this isn't uncommon. The XC was gone there. So I've got to put, you can get these pieces too. 
as well as the top of the A is rooted um, as is this and what is sort of a shame about this I have to brace it between the A and around here somewhere because I've got to take that hat off because um, it's got rust and I want to see under it and I'll probably have to replace some of the plenum or whatever under there um, it's a big job but it looks relatively I'm going to tempt fate here and say relatively straightforward um, all that seam seal is gone so I think that's all right there apparently you use Depotec and it's got bloody rust all over it I don't, I don't know I doubt that it could be an acrylic seal I'm not sure and that's not a GT box that is a 20 to 1 can you see the 20 near that bolt um, that's coming out we've got power steering to go in this car um, radiator support's great it's never been punched in the face as far as I know and we've got one shocker in there on that side but the firewall's mint torque boxes are even they're great the torque boxes so it really isn't that big of a deal this car um, I'm not frightened about any of it to be honest with you it doesn't worry me at all uh, but what I thought we'd do is we'll try off it so John's bought this dash top John's my brother and John won't buy cheap stuff he, he looks for stuff with the most um, with the biggest price on it because it's just not expensive enough he's the opposite to me on the cheapskate just want to see if it fits he was the one curious about it so I'm just going to take it out of the bag and sort of plop it in here and make sure it fits properly it's a bit hard to see um, because it tends to sag down because it's not secured yet it hasn't got the dash to rest on um, it does have a gap there let me have a look at the other car hang on a sec this is the reason I bought this wagon, so I can see what's supposed to happen with it and what's not. That's much tighter. Uh, all right. It does look different though, doesn't it? The other side's out, just a sec. Good thing I found that screw, it was sitting down on that ledge. I don't know how well they were factory fitted anyhow, to be frank. There's more of a gap on the other side than here. So it's the opposite to the other one. That's actually quite nice. Um, but it could be the weight of it in this area here. But that looks like it's sticking out a bit. Just a sec. Let's have a look underneath. Oh yeah, that looks like it goes in further. Just I'm gonna give it a hit, just a moment. Yeah, it just had to go in there a bit further. See those clips? They've got a sort of dimple in them to go into a sort of a um a, a thing in it. What do you call it? A um into a hole. So that should look a lot better from the outside. Let's have a bit of a squizzy. Oh yeah, that's better. Oh, that looks good. That looks like a nice fit. I mean, there's, look, there's going to be some discrepancy. It's an aftermarket part in a car that's about to get cut up and welded up. <laughs> it should be all right though. I'm not worried about it. It looks pretty good. It looks better than the rest of the bloody car anyway. This driver's door is flawless on this car. There's no rust anywhere in it. At least if there is a surface and it's gone through. From both sides, it looks pretty good. The back door leaves a lot to be desired, particularly under there. It might even be worth finding another door for it, but that driver's door means I've got another driver's door at home, um, as well as the skin from the passenger one here. Uh, and the skin from the passenger one, I'm wondering if I can use sort of this section here, work, 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 in there, um, to make that into an XA door. The driver's one I'm going to pull off because I want to modify it for an XA or to be an XA door and make it so it works off the handle and all this sort of other stuff. 
So my pop his door off and then take it home. So that when I bring it back, it's a good operational door and all this sort of stuff. Um, so I think I'll do that. Just gonna take it off. And pop it in the trailer. I might, should I, I'll just take one at a time, bugger it. I might be here all the time, I'll be here every two weeks. So yeah, I'll just take that one off. We'll arc up the vacuum cleaner in a minute and start cleaning that out. I also want to take out that back seat. Just so that I've got the whole interior stripped and I know exactly what's there. Look at this door. That's likely to be really brittle, so I'll take it off. This door's a minter. Well, it's not really mint, but... It's certainly worth... That's straight, bit of rust there. But... I think it's worth... Trying to... That... that Stow line, swage line, stow line you call it, I guess, is going to be a bastard to get right. So I'm going to cut it right at the base of the door handle. I don't really know whether to go to the edge and refold it um, because then I can have reinforcement behind it. I've never done one. I've never done one. Um, that's pitted, not good enough for the XC. Oh, shoot, hang on a minute. Let's turn him the other way around. It's got a, a different story from the other side. Wild Violet. Um, oh, you can't see, Henry. It's going to turn it all around. So we're going to be rebuilding some hinges. Oh, well, that one's stuffed. T standard Ford stuff. Um, under here's pretty good. Until you get to there. But I'm going to re I think it's worth rebuilding that bit. That bit and this bit here. Put a handle on it. There's a door for our wagon. It'll come up absolutely beautifully. So that is a good door. I'm very happy about that. We're going to keep it. Um, and while I got it off, you know, we'll clean it, take all that off, take the latch out of it, make sure we can, you know, open and close it. But you know, for our wagon, I'm pretty happy with that. In fact, I'm stoked. It's not as good on this side in some ways. Like, so we got rust in the top of the seal. Oh, the floor's just stuffed. We, we knew that. But look at this. I love this. Where does it? Is it up there? Is that 27th of September 1972? We always keep those bits. But <coughs> what I'm looking at, put the camera in the right spot. In behind here, actually feels quite solid. Just got all that stupid deadener. But that inner part there is in good shape. We know the floor stuff and the floor comes up to here along. So I just don't care about that. Do a Ricky Gervais at the Golden Globes. I just don't care. As he insults people. Oh, damn. Anyway, that all looks good. It all looks really good. Hang on. I've got another one of these dip switches. The channel for the wiring is solid. The boot wiring was great. A bit stiff, might replace some of it. Um, the connectors and so forth all look great. Two connectors for the rear loom there. Tabs. Have a look at that tab. A nice Jason had it on his. It says Taiwan. Oh, you can't zoom up. So making them. Um, is this a kill switch? That looks like a kill switch. Um, which, if you're going to steal the car, you go for the bonnet, you go too far and you hit the kill switch. Yeah, it's just all you press. So that's all looking good. I'm taking that bloody gearbox out today, but I don't know if you'd be bothered taking it out, to be honest. Um, missing something from here. 
Oh, gee. Everything is seized on. So far as wiring is concerned, it all looks pretty, pretty self-explanatory. I've got two. I don't know what that does. No, I don't know what that does. I think that one goes down here. But that should be the feed for the whole car. And that goes where the starter motor solenoid is. So that's its positive to the starter solenoid. And then that's just connected to it at the same time. And that powers the car. But I don't know what that is. It's nice to sort of play around with other people's wiring and just see what the hell they've done. This could be forward, I doubt it though. The tape looks too narrow. I'll pull that throttle bracket off. We don't need that. That's a six cylinder stick motor one. Log motor. They call them log motors, don't they? So I'm just sort of cruising around, just doing bits and pieces. That's the choke cable there. And that's normally where I bring the throttle cable out from. Um, the six, the Weber has a different type of arrangement that the throttle cable comes out right down here. So we'll see, we'll see how long it takes to fix it up. I think the sedan's got to have the, the, the sort of priority. Well, that all looks fairly kosher. These ones here, let's have a look at this. What the hell have we got here? Okay. That's different. That's wiper up there. This is engine as well. So one of these will be the coil feed. that for okay just a minute so we've got a few down here this with the engine loop well that that puzzles me that little connector there because that next to the wiper um, block connector that looks like a washer feed but then it goes up here which I'd have thought was the coil actually no he had a funny bracket there maybe he had a washer bottle there yeah that's probably what it was He's got, um, that's fallen off. That would have been the temperature sender, I would think. It's all stiff there, but it's good back here. No, it's not, it's crap there too. That white thing would be oil pressure, I would think. Then coil um, and washer, which would have been over there. I would think, I would say. Um, doesn't look like it's had a bottle there for a while, but it did have that funky looking bracket there, which I'm assuming was a washer bottle. But that in itself won't be too difficult to, figure out. That looks like it could be a factory wire because in here the forward tape is wide like that. What's this stuff? Is this electrical? Electrical tape or is it forward electrical tape? No, oh, no. Hang on. I oh, no. That's being put on later. That's just electrical tape. All right then. Yeah, that's later. That's not factory. And that wire looks like it's taped on top between there and the Ford, um, the board stuff. Yeah, so these, that's your factory tape, the wide stuff, as I said. This is all narrow. And they've unpicked the Ford tape. They've left that in there, which that is, doesn't even look big enough for a V8. I might change that out. And they put these two in. And I've no idea why, because I'm going to take them out. I just don't need them, because I know where the feeds are. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Because he's got that there. Yes, alternator feed. And what gave it away was I remember the XW had a black and yellow one to the alternator. So that's, yes, I beg your pardon, I'm a fool. That isn't big enough for an alternator. I'm going to put a bigger one in anyway. Because you can see the gauge of that is a lot bigger than what they've put in to charge the battery. So I'm going to change that out. I'll leave that off. I'll cut it off there. And I know that's an alternator charge wire. And there should be um, an exciter for the alternator. And that could be this guy. I reckon it is. And that should go to the ignition switch. That should go to the alternator to charge line. 
This is fun. I like I like sort of messing around with this stuff and figuring out what it all does because it's simple. Do you know what I mean? I already sort of know what most of this does. I'm going to neaten it up. Um, I'm not going to redo it all. I'm just going to take out. They're all nice conductors. I will unwrap it. Sorry about the wind. And re-tape it. I'll put a bigger starter wire in because that'll all just fry. And. I can put headlight things on, although to get it driving I don't need headlights. But that's what that is, that's high and low beam. Either that or that is, I don't know, but we'll figure it out. There's a group of verts. Um, yeah, easy peasy. So I haven't got any bones at all with with the wiring side of it, it's very simple. Um, but I will have to take that pedal out. I'm not going to use that type of throttle. Um, I think, can I get to it without taking, I don't want to take dashes out or anything, I just want to leave that there, for now, how's that held up, that's going to be a pain in the ass, isn't it, oh no, I can get to the bracket there, I think these ones, the pedal actually unscrews, no it doesn't, what a pain in the neck, um, that's not going to be easy to get out, and I'll, I'll pass it on to somebody, because they might want it, I'm not just going to cut it off, but I'll get the XB, XC one, which uses the hole. Is that speedo there? Which was the choke cable? It uses the hole for... I'm a bit worried about sticking my hands up there. I saw a red back in the um, thing yesterday, um, in the, behind the guard. So, yeah, that's the speedo cable. So where is the choke? Where's the choke on these? Is that where the choke was? Where's the choke on a six cylinder XA? Hang on, I can see what the speedo cable is. It's right above where the um Yeah, there's the speedo there. Oh so it's above the speedo where the choke cable was, yes. There it is there. So that's where I exited the um what I did on the XBXC when I got for the XW is I extended the length of the rod. So it pulled in line with that hole there on the XW and I turned up on aluminium, an aluminium, like um, an off cut of aluminium if you like, which fitted exactly in there and the cable spigot fitted exactly into the aluminium bit and then it came around and went into the carburetor on the other side. So I'm not going to use a manual choke. It'll be an auto choke on a holly or something around there. So it's above that spitter cable. So yeah, behind there. Behind there somewhere. Yeah, oh, I can figure it out. We're good. It's it's not a problem. Um, I think I might give it a back. And oops. Oh, I wanted to vacuum in the plenum to have a look in there too. Well, I'm loving this. What do you think, lad? <laughs> not bad, is it? That is not worth any stretch of, can I put the phone in there? Pulling the plenum apart, I'm just not going to because I don't need to. There's a bit more I can clean up down here. What's around here? Yeah, that's all good. I'm going to leave that. You know, the, <coughs> the fact that it's that clean is really good news because nothing's come through. I just forgot to bring my um, pressure washer. It's not really the weather for it, but when it warms up a bit, I'm just going to give it a good hose down and that'll divulge a bit more. I'll scrape off that cross member and you know, I'll plug that up because I don't want anything getting in the booster. I don't think anything would have got in there so far, but that doesn't matter. You know, I mean, the booster's probably fried anyhow, but. You know, it's, I'm quite excited about it all. It's a cool car. And the sun comes out. Welcome to Victoria. Um, we've had ourselves a rat's nest or a mouse nest, one of the two. So to clean that out. I'm going to use a dustpan and brush for that. I'm not touching that crap. Um, we'll get the rest of the broken glass out and we'll have a look at the floor underneath there. Here's the back seat, weighs about 14 tonnes. I've cut this cover off and we're going to turn it over. 
I'm scared to put my hand in there. I haven't got gloves on. Um, there's a guy, actually. Oh, this doesn't look too bad. Who's selling a set of door trims for a 500? Which is what this is. Cool. And I think they're blue. <laughs> and I'm thinking about getting them. Let's have a look this guy. Much strength in here. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, wow. Damn. That's going to come up a treat. Oh, that's a pity. This isn't as nice. There's a whole lot of staining around here and that's all sticky i stuck my finger in this rat urine or oh, mouse Actually, i'll just cut that there Ugh, is that stuck it's rusted off with urine maybe we'll just do that that's pretty gross so what i would be inclined to do is take the padding out really wash it or replace it and you know really clean up the frame because that's disgusting. There's probably pee on that as well. I should put some gloves on, I think. Yeah, we're not holding a breath with this one. Well, maybe we should be. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's an old wrecked car. Oh. Muck in there and so forth. Is that going to come off? Yuck. Do you smell? Aside from that though, the frame looks to be impeccable condition. We're split, but it's not terrible. Yeah, it's just sunburnt and... Parts of this car are unbelievable. Inside here, that's just dirt and mouse droppings. I mean, it's mint. And all in here, I'm, I'm going to bring my pressure washer and then I'll shoot a bit more on it. But that's as solid as solid. And yet, not far away from it. is rust down there. That's why I wanted to cut it along here and label this top bit. I mean, it remains to be seen if I'm able to, but this car is really good. More of the same, but not quite as good. Although in here is again, peachy, beautiful. No corrosion, nothing. All in here, lovely. Underneath where the seat was, beautiful. The only thing I'm finding here on this side is there's a bit of rust in the B there and along here. Now I do have a spare B pillar at home so I don't really care. That's not good enough. So I mean that's gone through too. So <coughs> I'm gonna take some paint off with a wheel to see what's what it's like because this is all bubbly around there so there could be something nasty i can't get in behind that car because it's metal but if i have to reinforce it and then put a piece in the bottom that's fine because i've got a spare leap off i don't really want to take the whole thing off um but, you know we'll just see how we go with it that being said all the rest of it's just fine you know the upper sill just that bit there at the bottom of the B. So, dog legs on this side. I haven't actually poked around here. That's solid as solid. It's really solid. I'm actually denting it a little bit. But you have to, yeah, I'm not taking any of that off. I just think it'd be stupid to do it. I mean, the car is so good. You know, it's all right to have something like this and just be sitting on it. Um, the guy, Robbie, I bought it from, he actually called because he saw the photograph. I used the photograph on the video, and that was the one that he took when he advertised the car. And he was really positive about it, but he, he sat on it for a while. I think he had it for 15 years. He bought it from a friend of his. 
with the idea of maybe doing something, maybe not. I think he was kind of nonchalant about it, but he did keep it in a very dry climate, but it was out in the open, it didn't seem to harm it. I think it's probably worse under a cover where moisture can stay than out in the open. And people say, you know, don't like my car getting wet and all this sort of stuff. It's not the water that harms them, it's leaves getting into places like this that harm them. Let's have a look at this back door. Looking at this back door, it looks pretty average, but some of that is just poor paint adhesion. That's not, but that is fixable. That's dirty. Yeah, we've got a little hole there. Um, that's nice underneath though. Again, they seem to go here for some reason. I don't know why, but that's not the end of the world by any stretch. That's another good door. Just a sec. It does need some attention. We've got a hole there, so it's a patch. That's bog. Yeah, so we've got some bogging up to do on it. <laughs> well, somebody else has, yeah. That could actually use a rust repair section across there. But it's very, um, fixing it's very achievable. Well, that's it for this weekend. Um, I'll be back in a fortnight to give it a pressure wash and maybe do a few other things. I might take the gearbox out, I might not. We'll see how it feels, but, um, oh, I might just take those seat belts home and have a look at those. All right, so I've got to roll those up. I'll just let them dry up properly, they're a bit damp. Seatbelts from the XA are disgusting. I'm just going to see if I can clean them up a little bit. Isn't advisable, but what the hell? We'll give them a rinse, then a wash in the old morning fresh. Right, spare parts and seatbelts. <clears throat> These are the seatbelts out of the wagon. And I gave them a bath. <laughs> and they're actually, this one looks like it's been re-webbed. It's in very good condition. Buckle works beautifully. You can buy those stickers. Um, so that's a winner. That's a real chicken dinner. It's even got the original sleeve there, which I think looks crap, but you know, it's it's there, so I'm not going to take it off. There's one. Um, these ones here, a bit faded. Obviously, well, it's still actually technically right. Really, that hasn't got armour or anything on it, but that will clean up. Um, cool, that's not roadworthy. I used to do roadworthy certificates back in the 90s and any fraying wasn't allowed and I fought with a lot of used car managers, one in particular, who'd always kept the cigarette lighter out and even things like this and I remember I refused to sign one when it had a chunk out of it. Now what causes this that's not the damaged one. This one works too, look at this. It's so good. I've lost the other one of those. I must have left it up at the other place. But these sorts of things are a no-no. They're a failure. Um, this sort of thing here. And they used to just burn them off with a cigarette lighter. Now I'm not going to use that. But it just shows the lengths people would go to to avoid spending money on a new belt. Now what I did notice with the XC was that seat belts are not that expensive to get re-webbed. But that's what they used to do. And that looks dreadful. But I wouldn't I wouldn't use that. But that's a bit of trivia on what they used to do. For a paddock basher, that's fine. The other thing is, these, I'm not sure if they can be replaced. I don't know if you can get those. Because one of them is missing. There's the thing for it there. No, I don't know where it is. It's probably still in the study. But anyway, look, that is, pun me, the state of the belts in the back. And they were pretty manky, but they've actually cleaned up fine. I would be inclined to just, you know, freshen them up a bit of armour or which is just silicon to make them look pretty. But at the end of the day, they've had it. The good thing about it is some of the fittings are really usable. So 
um, I'll just re-web them, which is exactly what I did with the XC, and that turned out lovely. So, anyway, there's that. These parts here now, I got these parts from an eBay seller who was very reasonable, and you know, a lot of eBay people are ripoffs. There's one I can't stand. I'm not going to mention his name, but I really want to. And he's a terrible seller. Well, anyway, I paid 20 bucks for that, or 19.99 for that. 37 dollars for the two V8 engine mount things. That big blue thing is the floor brace for the wagon, and he's even cleaned that up. But I got to, you know, drill it, unpick it, and all this sort of stuff, and that'll go on the floor in the wagon. It's a bucket seat brace, and that was 20 bucks as well. So that was 20 bucks, 37 bucks, 20 bucks, and I think that was 20 or 30 bucks. I can't remember how much I paid for this. Now, that clutch feels fine, but I'll use one of mine. They're not painted. And I might give that one a paint job. He's done a fair job with it, though. I mean, it doesn't look tidy because it's been battered, but that's what I want. That's exactly what I want for the fair lane. So, really, really happy. Um, really happy with those parts so anyway look i hope you've enjoyed this video i haven't had as much content because the bulk of the work's being done um but i am going to start on that wagon no not wagon sedan um for my brother so i'm keen to sort of get going on that one uh but until then take good care of yourselves enjoy your classic and i'll see you soon